Gary Newman. Gary, can you hear me? Yeah, hello, man. How are you doing? Yes, very well. How are you, man? Yeah, I'm all right, actually. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so you're here to talk about the brand new album. We're very... Uh, very honoured to have you on the phone with us. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, for, for me, this is an album that kind of brings together all of the influences um, that you've kind of, you know, become famous for and everyone's heard in previous albums. I mean, just just to kick off, I mean, how does it feel to be Gary Newman right now? To be really honest, it's, it's actually quite good. Um, I haven't always been able to say that. You know, there's, there's been times when being me wasn't the best thing in the world, really. But... Um, uh, for the last sort of few years or so, um, it, things have been getting much, much better. You know, I think my, from a personal point of view, I think my songwriting has improved a lot over the last sort of 10 or 15 years. Um, I, I seem to have a lot more sort of credibility now than I, than I have had at times in the past. You know, lots more people cover my songs now and talk about me as being um, you know, sort of influential in what they've done and so on. So it's kind of created a bit of a, a renaissance period for me so I'm really enjoying it and as I say luckily for me that sort of coincided with my own songwriting I think um, so taking a big step forward so uh, it's actually pretty good you know I'm really pleased with Death and Rising and the way the touring has been going it's, it's been a it's, this has been a really good year but it's actually been um, you know many good years as you each one thinks it's slightly better than the one before it's a very optimistic sort of period for me really Good, yeah. Um, I, you know, with reference to the actual album, I wanted to ask you just, you know, the whole kind of process of working with Aid Fenton. Like, just talk us through, you know, okay, it's day one, you reach the studio. Um, you know, where's your head at when you start thinking about this album? Like, exactly what are you trying to hope to achieve? And, um, you know, just talk us through the process of the album. Well, this was a bit of a quirky one. Um, it started out as then, uh, there's, an, there's an album called Splinter mm-hmm. that I've been working on for quite some time. And uh, it's still not released, I still haven't finished it. And we knew, I was talking to Aid one day, and we knew that was going to take a while to make for various reasons. And so he said, you know, if we take another year, you know, years to make another album, then, then everyone's just going to lose interest and all this positive sort of vibe that's coming your way, we're going to lose it. So we need to get something out much quicker. He said, so what, what have you got? You know, what songs have you got sitting on the shelf that you've not used? And, and I had very, very little, to be honest, because I don't keep much. You know, if, if something's not working for me, I tend to just get rid of it. But um, I, I sort of changed that attitude for the last album and the one before. So I, I had a few things from the previous two albums that I hadn't finished, either because I'd run out of time or whatever it was. And so we started to put that together as an idea to, to put out a quick album. So it was a very, um, very much a filler kind of an album. You know, so I, I didn't have a lot of sort of artistic or creative um, ambition for it at all. We started to put that together. It, it did come together very quickly, and then I had to confess that it, I just, I just didn't like it. You know, it, it hadn't worked out how I wanted to. So I walked away from it, and I, I don't think I listened to it for about 18 months. And then I was on holiday in Florida, and uh, my wife was playing a track in the background, and I went running in because that was the sort of stuff I, I wanted to be doing. You know, I went, went running into her and said, "What's that?" You know, because that's what the new album should be like. And she said, "It is you, idiot." You know, that is, that's the stuff that you walked away from about a year and a half. And I didn't recognise it at all. So when I came home, I, I rang Aid up and apologised for all that. And we went back to work on it again. But in, in the process, we decided that we would actually start again. So we just, we just scrapped it pretty, pretty much, but, but kept some of the, the core chord structures and so on and melodies. So the album that we've ended up with is, is I would say, 90% new material and not the filler album that we'd intended. And I, and I think that's why I've ended up being a lot more proud of it. If it had just been a filler of old, unused demos, it, it, it wouldn't have had the same interest to me. But it's not that. You know, it's essentially almost an entirely new, newly written album. Um, so, and it's, been, it's gone down really well. You know, the, the reviews have been really good. Um, people, you know, the fans seem to like it. So, so I'm, I'm very pleased, actually, the way it turned out. But if it hadn't been for age, keeping on at it you know keeping chinking away with it. it it may never have happened well let me tell you as we broadcast live from East Village Radio today New York City is glad to have you back Gary and, and as an Englishman as well a fellow Englishman we're happy to have you back as well um, let, let's play the, t- uh, the title track Dead Sun Rising and uh, we'll speak to you more straight after this sure, cheers you're listening to East Village Radio. It's James Thicker here broadcasting from uh, New York City, a very uh, cold but sunshiny New York City today. And uh, we are very lucky to have Gary Newman on the phone. Um, Gary, that was Dead Sun Rising. How does it f- kind of feel to hear that live on the radio? Do you ever kind of get used to 
to hearing your own music out on, out on live radio, or how does it feel? Uh, no, to be, to be truthful, I, I don't hear it anything like enough <laughs> <laughs> on live radio. I, I, as, as, a, as my music over the years, um, certainly for the last sort of 10 or 15 years or so, it's got a, a lot heavier than it used to be, and a lot darker than it used to be, and it's, it's very, very difficult to, to find people that are willing to to play it really yeah you know, certainly mainstream radio you know it's very formulaic and they, they don't really go for that sort of thing so it's a very welcome treat actually to hear it live on radio so thank, thank you <laughs> my pleasure um, i wanted to ask you you know obviously over the years you've kind of become known as sort of the godfather of the synthesizer um you, you know as far as technological advancements go do you still kind of you know studio setup wise do you still kind of have the same synthesizers um are you more kind of vst based are you using computers more or how does it kind of work in your studio as a live setup uh, it's very computer-based uh, in in the studio. I, I I run a system called Pro Tools mm-hmm. um, through a Mac. So it's all not that many years ago. You know, I had a, a relatively conventional studio, you know, with a long mixing desk with hundreds and hundreds of switches and faders and all that sort of thing, and racks and racks and racks of gear with wires coming out of it, and you know, it looked like the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> and now. Everything that was in that room has is, is come down to a relatively small little box that sits in the corner. So it's absolutely beyond recognition to what it was before, but actually far more powerful, far more efficient, far quieter. So um, it, it's, it, it's a relatively easy thing to, to make an album um, from a technology point of view. You know, I make them sound really, really good. It's this constant challenge to keep coming up with new ideas and find a new sound. So I, I'm very up to speed with all the latest technology you know, my, my studio is software synth based um, multiple screens and all that kind of thing so it, the whole um, technology side of it was a thing that interested me in electronic music in the very first place so at the very very beginning a different kind of technology but it was that that got me excited about it and I've never lost that you know every time I, I get an email or drop through the door you know it's saying oh, there's a new bit of software come out for, for whatever it might be I'm straight in there and I'm trying to work out how it you know how i can use it and what to get out of it mm. i'm still obsessed by technology as much as i was 30 odd years ago um i wanted to ask you you know obviously approaching a new album project how might that compare to you know the film stuff that you've you've been kind of known for in the past um you know i, I think back to the unborn in 91 and um i mean do you have more plans to do more film stuff in future or like how does that process differ when you approach um, music from you know a film point of view or an album point of view. I, I think it's 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 a lot, lot more technical, you know, and, it, and depending on the way the director works. If you you're, you're given a particular scene that they want music for, you know, and a director can give you good guidance, um, no guidance, <laughs> or sometimes very conflicting guidance, then that gets a bit difficult. And then you finally get the music sorted, and it's all sitting there perfectly, all the key points, and then they'll come back and they do a re-edit. And it'll now be different, and the music doesn't fit. And it, so it can be very, very frustrating. But when it works, and when you, you know, and when you get it right, it's actually amazing. And I, I enjoy working on film very much. And it's something that I would very much like to get more involved with in the future. It's just that at the moment, you, you know, I, I'm putting out new albums, and I'm really, I've, I've never loved touring more than I do now. And I, all I really want to do, to be honest, is just, you know, put albums out, get in the bus. You know, disappear around the world and, and just tour the thing and I, I I can't imagine not wanting to do that but I, I am aware that I'm getting older and at some point I'm going to have to transition from what I do now into a different kind of sort of musical creation which is probably going to be have a much greater emphasis on film mm. so I would like to do more of it and I do find it exciting and challenging but I, I just don't want to give up touring at the minute you know being in a band and being out on the road and doing gigs every night I, I just I can't believe there's anything better to do with your life ok well for the here and now we're thankful to have you still out on the road um, tell us a bit about where we can catch you next few months you know where you're going to be touring the album well we just finished uh, the, the British part of it was finished in mm-hmm. uh, on, uh, Monday just gone actually Sunday Monday just gone uh, so that's pretty much it now for Christmas we've got some more shows in the UK in May um, but what I'm doing between now and May is finishing off the next album. So I'm totally studio bound now until <clears throat> till May. And then we're booking up the summer festival season. So we're completely locked into um, summer festivals in, in Europe and, and the UK, obviously. 
Uh, and then towards the end of the year, the, the new album, the one that has a working title of Splinter, mm-hmm. that's going to be coming out, and that's the one that we're going to be bringing everywhere. So w- when Splinter comes out, we, we have a complete kind of global plan for it. Um, America, South America, y- Europe at some point, UK obviously, and then into the Australia and, and those other markets and some other places that we've not actually been to before, some of the... Um, you know, Bosnia, Western European, Northwestern European type countries. Wow. So for us, it, it's quite an exciting time, but it, but it all hinges on me getting this um, Splinter album ready. And it's it's a deadline that I've missed a few times in the past, unfortunately, <laughs> so I really have to get it done now for April. All right, well, we won't keep you any longer. Gary Newman, it's been an absolute pleasure on behalf of um, of everyone here in the East Village of New York. Um, thank you for joining sure. us. And, um, thank you. And have a great holiday season and new year, and here's to, uh, here's to Splinter landing soon in 2012 for us, all right? We'll speak thank to you, you then. Much, thank you very much, Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye.